Hi everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit, back for another review today, and uh, I'm pretty excited about today's pen. This is a new addition to my collection. I've only had it for a couple of weeks, and it's one that I've wanted for a long time, but uh, I've put off buying because they're not, they're not cheap. Uh, this is the Pelican M805. This is part of their Souverain position, or uh, line, which is Sovereign in German, I believe. And uh, it's a nice pen. I'm just going to start off by saying it's a nice pen. It's a very nice pen. I like it a lot. Um, so let's talk through uh, kind of what the pen looks like. So it's, uh, this is kind of the standard Pelican line. If, if you're looking for a Pelican flagship pen, besides the, like the M1000, the M800 is, is pretty close to, to the same thing. Now, the naming convention, as far as I'm able to tell, um, the M, fill in the blank, 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000 are all gold trim pens. If the pen has a silvery trim, um, I believe this is a rhodium trim, but I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, then it it's instead of being 800, it would be 805. And there's an 815. I don't, I've heard, I just heard of it. I've never seen one. Um, the M805 comes in a couple of different colors. It comes in a, uh, I believe it's a just an all black pen. And then it comes with this uh, blue stripe, which is the one I really like. So um, start at the top, you've got the, the Pelican logo kind of sandblasted into the top here. It's very pretty. Um, kind of the bill shaped, Pelican bill shaped clip here. You can see that from the side. Uh, black cap with uh, silver trim. It says made in Germany, Pelican Souverain. Um, then the barrel is a kind of blue stripe, and this, the stripes themselves, as is often the case with these pens, are, are kind of see-through, so you can kind of get a sense of what the ink level is in your pen, even though uh, you can't really, it's not a demonstrator pen. You can't see the ink clearly, but if you hold it up to the light, I can get a little bit of sense of the ink level inside the pen. Uh, a couple of stripes here, and then the cap on the back. Now, this is a demonstrator, uh, not a demonstrator, excuse me, this is a, uh, a piston filler pen, so this cap twists and causes the piston to rise up and down. Twist off cap, pretty standard black section down here, and then the just absolutely stunning Pelican nibs. And if there's one thing Pelican does well, it is they make pretty, pretty nibs. I mean, uh, I'll, we'll talk about the way they write in, in just a little bit when we get to the writing sample, but their nibs, they look nice, nice nibs. Um, one thing I will say about this nib, and I've seen it several times, um, is this nib tends to have, tends to pull ink on the surface. So uh, even when I've done nothing at all, you know, I'll wipe off the nib and I'll open the cap up and there'll be ink on the surface. Now, with the way that the engraving is on this pen, that doesn't bother me because it looks really cool. But if you're one of those people who just hates to have ink on the top side of your nib, I might suggest avoid this pen because you're always going to have ink on the top side of this nib. There's really, at least it's my experience with a couple of inks I've used in this one. It's just always that way. Um, okay, some of the stats. So it is 141 millimeters capped. This is a big pen. I mean, this is, is quite a large pen. Um, uncapped, it's 127, and it fits very comfortably in the hand. Uh, it, it can be posted, and posted, it weighs, or it is uh, 166 posted, I believe, uh, millimeters posted. And it's, as I mentioned, it's a big pen, but it's not a terribly heavy pen. Uh, it is one hundred. It's uncapped. It's twenty-two grams, and then the cap itself is only an additional eight grams, bringing the total to thirty grams. And because the the cap is so light, posting it doesn't add a lot of weight, and certainly doesn't make it feel back heavy in the way that I mean. You can see I'm not even holding on to the pen, and it's sitting quite comfortably in my hand. Um, the barrel is thirteen millimeters. Yeah, at the widest point. And the section goes from about 10 and a half at the narrowest point to about 11 and a half millimeters at the widest point of the section. Now there is uh, up here at the top of the section, there are threads that, that come right there, but they're, um, they don't, they don't feel sharp or too terribly raised. So when I'm holding the pen like this, I can, I can feel that there are threads there, but they don't feel like 
thread. You know, I can feel something there, but they don't feel like threads. Um, so if that, if you're, again, if you're one of those people for whom threads really bother you, I don't think you're going to have a problem for this. The section is quite small though. It's not a large section. So, uh, okay. So let's talk a little bit about looks. This is one of the standard pens. Um, everyone has, well, not everyone. Most people who are serious about fountain pens have had at least one experience with a Pelican pen. Um, the 805 is a, is a very nice pen and I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, it, it is a little larger than I was expecting. Um, you know, I was thinking, oh, okay, this will be the step down from the M1000, which is a, a very large pen, but it, fe it still feels quite large. Um, if you were looking for a more regular size pen, you might want to look at something like a 600 or a 400. Um, but obviously, as you go up in numbers, the size of the pen goes up, the expense of the pen goes up, the features go up, that sort of thing. And of course, the the blue stripe on this pen is just beautiful. I really like this blue color. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what to say about it. It's a pretty pen, and I like it a lot. It fits very comfortably in the hand. Now, the nibs on Pelican pens, as far as I've been able to determine to this point, are not going to be like the nib you get in a lot of other pens. Um, so I got a, a medium on this nib, and this pen writes broader than most of the broads in my collection. Uh, you can even even more than you know. We hear a lot about the Japanese pens have a narrower line, and and European pens tend to have a thicker line. So you know, a, a Japanese medium is actually more like a European fine. Well, in the case of Pelican, a Japanese broad would be more like a pelican fine. Um, it's just, these are wi much wider than their names would suggest. Uh, so I got a medium, understanding that it was going to be wider than a, a standard European medium, but not realizing by how much. These are big pens. The other thing I found interesting, and I'll demonstrate this when we get over to the writing sample, is that these pens tend to be a little stubby. And I don't mean stubby as in short, I mean, they tend to be ground more like a stub nib. So, you know, a standard nib is round like this, and then a stub nib is kind of flattened. So you get on, on the cross strokes, you get very narrow strokes, but on the up and vertical strokes, you'll get much uh, wider strokes. This is not a full stub, but it does tend to have a little bit of that stub-like variation between the horizontal and the vertical. Um, I will say on this pen, Came out of the box. I made. I've made no adjustments to it. It wrote beautifully right out of the box, which is not an experience I can say I've had with most of the pens in my collection. Almost all of them have needed an adjustment of one kind or another. So to get a pen that writes beautifully right out of the box, huge. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do the writing sample, and we'll come back and just wrap up, talk about a few more things about the pen. So here we go. Okay. So here we are. Let me just do the end. We've got a. Pelican M805. Souverain. And actually, technically that goes over here. The, the nib is 18 karat gold. And it is a medium. And as I talked about earlier, I'm just going to put that in quotation marks. Let me zoom in just a touch here. And the ink for today is Iro Shizuku Asagao. Okay. So a little quote. All right, so writes very smoothly, quite comfortable to hold. Um, ink flow is, is nice. So if you see here, we've got, uh, if, if we talk about wetness, 
it's moderately wet, but not terribly so. Um, let me show you what I was talking about, though. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so you can kind of get a sense of what I mean here. But um, so this is the downstroke. I'm not applying any pressure here. And this is the cross stroke. And you can see a difference all, even without me applying any pressure. The downstrokes are wider than the cross strokes. And this is supposed to be a round nib. Uh, it's, it's a little, I'd say, oblong <laughs> instead of round. It's not, a, it's not a stub nib. It's not a true stub. But it does have some stubby tendencies, some stub-ish tendencies, perhaps a better way of saying that. Um, in terms of line variation, though, as 18 karat nib, it does flex just a little bit here. You can see um, it's not, you know, if if this were a finer nib, I think that line variation would would be a little bit more pronounced, but it's already a pretty wide nib. So there's not a lot of space for it to spread, but it does have just a, a tiny bit of spring to the nib. It's it's not bad. Um, yeah, so it's. Uh, it's a it's a nice rider uh, in terms of reverse or upside down riding. It will ride it is quite scratchy um, and very dry. It's this this is probably one of the worst upside down riders, and it doesn't seem to do particularly well upside down. I know that I know pens can be ground to ride upside down. Um, I know uh, I believe it's uh, Mike Masayama does a, a double double grind one one size grind on the bottom and another size grind on the top which is kind of cool but uh, not something i would use all that often personally so um yeah it's it's a nice pen it writes beautifully it it's quite comfortable in the hand it you know i really don't have any complaints about the pen um that being said i've yet to fall in love with this pen I like it a lot. I really do. Um, but it's not one that I, I can say, oh my gosh, I just adore this pen. And I'm not entirely sure why that is. I, I still need some time to play around with it. I've used it a lot. Um, and I need to figure out what it is about the pen that's not quite clicking with me. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely going to keep it. I'm not going to get rid of this pen. It's a beautiful pen. It writes beautifully. I like it. Um, I'm just not entirely sure why I don't love it. And, and it may just be that um, I think it might be just slightly that the grip isn't quite as, as perfect for my hand as I would like. It's very nice and very comfortable. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful pen. It's a really, really nice pen. So um, for my first Pelican, I have to say, good job, Pelican. I like this pen a lot. It's, it's a beauty. Um, it's a classic. It writes well. It's well made. It's very well constructed. The threads are perfectly smooth. The piston is perfectly smooth and doesn't offer a lot of resistance. The nib is stunning. It's just a really, really nice pen. So I believe that will do it for my review of the Pelican M805 Souverain, uh, or let me say that correctly, Pelican Souverain M805. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, want to see additional photos, please head over to penhabit.com and leave a comment over there or leave a comment in the videos. I've been trying to do a little bit better job responding to comments. I can't get to all of them uh, as, as quickly as I would like, but I do what I can. And uh, you can also over at penhabit.com find links to all of my social media hangouts as well, including two new Pinterest boards that I've created, one for fountain pens and inks, and one for that actually just shows ink samples. So if you're looking for a board of ink samples, so you're like, hmm, I don't know what color to get. I'm going to be adding more to that over time. Uh, I've got been another pen coming in the mail, hopefully this week, that I'll be able to put a review together for. And then I'm going to be trying to focus a little bit more of my time on ink samples over the next while, because I've still got about 60 bottles of ink I haven't reviewed. So Thank you again for watching. We'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.